time's almost up. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 WTF horror movie ideas. Santa? <laughs> yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. <laughs> Did you hear the police radio? It's solid tomatoes between here and Holtville. We're liable to get killed. For this list, we're looking at the wackiest, weirdest, most insane premises for horror films. They're not necessarily bad, but how did they ever get approved? Since we'll be delving into important plot points here, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Do you have any weird horror movie ideas? Give us your creative gems in the comments. Number 10. Deadly Produce – Attack of the Killer Tomatoes Across this great nation, almost everyone has been affected in one way or another by this terrible tomato onslaught. The folks responsible for 1978's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes made no bones about being in on the joke. This is full-on parody mode. The film satirizes horror films and disaster flicks and has a damn good time all the way. <laughs> There's nothing deep or subtle about the idea behind Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. We're just dealing with anthropomorphic produce that have gained sentience and are out for blood. Or is that ketchup? The cast sells their tomato deaths with straight faces, however, and that just makes the experience that much more of a blast. Or make that a splat. Hey, will somebody please pass the ketchup? Number 9. Wicked Saint Nick – Santa's Slay Santa? <laughs> yes, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. The idea of a killer Santa actually dates back a long time, with some stellar examples being 1972's Tales from the Crypt and 1984's Silent Night, Deadly Night. The latter caused public uproar and protest upon release. Those movies showcase psychotically damaged killers dressed as Santa. Naughty. But 2005's Santa's Slay actually featured the real deal on a rampage, played by pro wrestling icon Bill Goldberg. The film is a fun mixture of horror and comedy that can be relatively entertaining, but not everyone can get down with the idea of such a wholesome Christmas personality going ham around the holidays. Who's your daddy? Father Christmas. Speaking of which, can we also interest you in a little film called Elves? Wait, hey, where are you going? I had a rough day at work. Santa got murdered. Number 8. Zoo animals are affected by contaminated water. The wild beasts. The earthquake. Wild beasts is going to be our first visit to Italy during the course of this list, but trust us, it will not be the last. This 1984 film from director Franco Prosperi possesses the bonkers premise of PCP getting into the water supply of a local zoo, with predictably over-the-top results. They're elephants! How the hell did they get here? Prosperi was already comfortable pushing boundaries at this time, having co-helmed a series of controversial documentary Mondo films in the 70s, such as Goodbye Uncle Tom and Africa Blood and Guts. As such, Prosperi pushed working with animals to the limits in this film, which featured painted rats, stampeding elephants, and marauding tigers. All in all, it's an exploitative movie with a very dubious premise. <laughs> Number 7. Short and Monstrous – Ratman <laughs> Speaking of movies with a questionable moral compass, we're going back to Italy again with Ratman. This 1988 film co-starred Nelson De La Rosa, one of the shortest men of the modern day. De La Rosa, a native of the Dominican Republic, actually appeared in some mainstream movies, such as the infamous 1996 remake of The Island of Dr. Moreau alongside Marlon Brando. Ratman, however, is pure exploitation, with Nelson's size serving as the deciding factor in casting him as a mutant rat-slash-monkey hybrid that's murdering folks in the Caribbean. This isn't to say that the film is necessarily bad, as De La Rosa does give his all as the titular rat man, but today the decision might be seen as in poor taste. <laughs> Number 6. A Walrus Man – Tusk Okay, so the idea of creating a monster from spare parts isn't exactly an original one when it comes to the world of horror. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Then again, when the end result happens to be a walrus-human hybrid, and the whole thing is written and directed by Kevin Smith, maybe you're on to something. For some time now, I've been constructing a very realistic walrus. 
suit. Tusk has divided fans since its release in 2014, but the finished product is certainly a different take on the Frankenstein slash Island of Dr. Moreau type of storytelling. Justin Long is the unfortunate victim of the psychotic Howard Howe and his walrus fetish, going all out for the film's bestial climax. You will fight me, Mr. Walrus, or you will die! Sure, Johnny Depp is beyond annoying in the film, but hey, you can't have everything. This man is making King a monster. Number five, a stop motion twin that lives in a basket. Basket case. <laughs> What's in the basket, you ask? Trust us when we say that you might actually not want to know. Basket Case is a film filled with the spirit of old New York, the sort of flick that thrived in the grimy grindhouses of Times Square. It also possesses a premise tailor-made for that era of exploitation and ultra-violence, the story of conjoined twins out for bloody revenge against the doctors who separated them all those years ago. What's in the basket? Basket Case is a romp that combines charming old school effects, stop motion anyone, with believable sleaze. The while the basket monster comes across as creepy and disgusting, yet pitiful at the same time. Oh my god, what's that? Dwayne, let me up! Let me up! Dwayne, let me up! Number four, an evil elevator, the lift. The trailer for this 1983 Dutch film sums it up best with its memorable tagline, Take the Stairs. The lift is a cult classic of sorts that does exactly what you think, present a normal, everyday elevator as a sentient machine out for blood. The thing is, the lift, well, actually sort of works. So lift beweegt niet uit zichzelf. The cast treats the story with a nice balance of respect and black humor. The death scenes are shot with style and suspense, and the film's killer electronic score is something straight out of the John Carpenter mold. It all just depends on how much one can suspend their disbelief and enjoy the lift for what it is. Silly, but good horror fun. Number three, Bunnies from Hell, Night of the Lepus. What caused the unnatural death, destruction, and panic? That Night of the Lepus. Sometimes all you need is a great trailer. Night of the Lepus presents itself as the latest and greatest monster disaster flick of the early 70s, a surefire way to deliver some animal carnage. The thing is, our titular Lepus are actually really cute bunnies, mutated to larger size and killing lots of townsfolk. National Guard Alpha Company reports the rabbits are near four corners, killing as they come. But they're still cute bunnies nonetheless. This is a film that's supremely of its time, a silly drive-in picture played relatively straight by a surprising number of Hollywood heavyweights, including Janet Leigh, DeForest Kelly, and Stuart Whitman. In this respect, it's tons of bloody fun, but don't go in expecting any legitimate scares. Rabbits as big and as ferocious as wolves? It is inconceivable. Number two, Killer Vegetarian Goblins, Troll 2. Go back. We're returning to Italy one last time for the much discussed and still totally bonkers Troll 2. Director Claudio Fragasso was no stranger to going full WTF, such as the time he convinced shock rocker Alice Cooper to star in his werewolf film Monster Dog and gave him an unconvincing dub. Go wake up Mary Lou. Make it quick. Troll 2 was something a bit different, as it was essentially piggybacking upon the unrelated American film Troll, despite having nothing to do with that film's plot, or trolls in general. Instead, we get vegetarian goblins who turn their victims into plant matter and eat them. A crazy, overacting witch, and one of the most overexposed internet memes in history. They're eating her! And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! In other words, it's the stuff of which bad movie dreams are made of. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Thor vs. Beezlebub, rock and roll nightmare. The band Thor, that is. Still a weird idea. This is your end, this place. <laughs> Baby Monster, It's Alive, a mutant newborn on a rampage. Yeah. 
Evil trucks, maximum overdrive. A comet brings Earth's machines to life. <laughs> Cookie Monster, the ginger dead man. Gary Busey as nightmare fuel. Looking for this? Yeah. Baby, it's all over but the crying. A murderous snowman, Jack Frost. Do you want a killer snowman? How are you? World's most pissed off snow cone. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, shaman neck growth, the Manitou. He will kill you all. And you think you're having a bad day? Poor Susan Strasberg suffers the ultimate WTF horror movie plot device in the form of a malignant tumor that seems to be growing on her neck. But wait, it's actually not a tumor. It's not a tumor. But a vengeful Native American shaman named Misquamacus that's attempting rebirth the hard way. As if that premise wasn't strange enough, the Manitou goes all in with the weirdness from that point on, as the reborn Misquamacus utilizes just about every tool at his disposal to take his revenge. From lizard illusions to space battles with force lightning, the Manitou is psychedelic 70s horror at its most bananas. It's really crazy. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.